Welcome to day one of Good News Day Camp, boys and girls. We're so glad that you decided to join us. I'm Mrs. Sue. Mrs. Jen will be joining me as well, and we're really excited about having you with us today. Let's start out by singing one verse of our theme song, The Light of the World is Jesus. But first of all, let's see what the words mean. It starts out with, the whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. We know that sin are those wrong things that we do that, that make God sad, and so of course we're lost in that darkness. But the light of the world is Jesus, because He's the one who saves us from our sin. Like sunshine at noonday, His glory shone in. Think about how bright the sun is when it comes out, and that's just like the light of Jesus. Come to the light. Tis or it is shining for thee, it's shining for you and for me. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. And so we think about how even um, something comes upon us like that with that light, we know that Jesus' light can shine on us and, and make us clean from our sin. Then we say, once I was blind, well, it doesn't mean that you really couldn't see, but we're lost in our sin. We can't see the light because of our sin, but because of what Jesus did for you and for me, we can say, the light of the world is Jesus. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, His glory shone in. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light. Hello everyone. Like Mrs. Sue said, my name is Mrs. Jen and I'm so excited to be with you this week for our online camp. Now, have you ever gone to a friend's house and maybe for some reason their parents said you couldn't stay or their kids couldn't come out and play? That would be kind of disappointing, wouldn't it? Well, something like that kind of happens in our memory verse for today. It comes from the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 14. I'm going to read it to you right from the Bible so that you know that I didn't make up these words. This is something that actually Jesus said, okay? It comes from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14, and it says, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Now, when we say the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14, that's the address of the verse. That's where we find it in the Bible. And when we do that, we're going to hold our hands like an open book. Okay? The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. And then the next words up here say, suffer the little children. Now, suffer, we usually think of as meaning like you're hurt or you're in pain. But these little children were in pain. It was an older word at the time that meant to allow or to let. So Jesus is saying, let the little children. So we're going to make a come motion when we say, suffer the little children. So the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14, suffer the little children. And then the next part says, to come unto me. Now, in our lesson today, the children actually get to see Jesus. Now, you and I can't see Jesus today, but we can still come to Jesus when we believe that he died on the cross to pay for our sins and that he came alive again. So when we say, to come unto me, we're talking about to come unto Jesus, and how he died on the cross to save us from our sins. So you're gonna take your pointer fingers and make a cross. When it says, forbid them not, just shake your head no. Jesus is saying, don't say that he can't come, let them. And then that last part, for of such is the kingdom of God. Jesus wanted everyone to know that children were important to him and that they were to be an example to everyone because of how they trusted in him and how they loved them or how they loved him with their whole heart. Isn't that wonderful? You could be an example to someone else if you love Jesus with your whole heart. And if you've asked Jesus to be your savior from sin, 
then you are part of the kingdom of God or God's family. Isn't that great? Now, we're going to stand up and say the verse all together with the motions, and then we're going to play a game. And we're going to say the address at the beginning and the end. Are you ready? Are you standing up? Here we go. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. And I forgot to tell you that part, didn't I? So when we say, for of such is the kingdom of God, we're going to point up to heaven. But that's a pretty easy one, right? The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Okay, you can have a seat. For our game today, we're going to play crazy stand-ups. So I'm going to tell you something, like maybe something you're wearing, maybe something you've eaten. And if you have done that thing, you stand up and say the verse with me. Now, if you haven't, you stay seated, but you can still do the motions with us. Are you ready? You listening? First one. If you are wearing shorts today, stand up and say the verse with me. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Good job, you can have a seat. Okay, next one. Have you eaten anything off the grill? Mm. Or maybe had a picnic with your family or friends? If you have, stand up and say the verse with me. You ready? The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Good job, you can have a seat. One more, are you ready? If you have any fingers or any toes at all, stand up and say the verse with me. That should be just about everybody. You ready? The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Great job. You can have a seat. All right, it's time for our Bible lesson. But before we begin, I want to pray with you. Oh, eyes closed, heads bowed. Dear Jesus, we thank you so very much for everything that you've given to us. Help us to learn from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. A long time ago, there was a very important man who walked on earth, but he wasn't just a man. He was the very son of God. Do you know what his name is? I bet some of you do. His name is Jesus, and he is the very, the only and perfect son of God. The only and perfect son of God. You know, you might think that Jesus, being such an important person and the son of God, would only speak to other important people. And in a way, you would be right. But do you know who was important to Jesus? Children. Children were important to Jesus. Now, in the days when Jesus lived on earth, he traveled around and he taught many people about God in the Bible. And when Jesus taught the people, he would often do special things called miracles, things that could only be done by the power of God. What were they called? They were called miracles. Now, some of the special things that people had seen Jesus do, he had made sick people well, he had made blind people so that they could see, deaf people so that they could hear, and they even crippled people so that they could walk again, they could use their legs. One time, Jesus even took a little boy's small lunch and fed over 5,000 people with his small lunch. Wasn't that incredible? No wonder there were crowds of people who came to see and hear Jesus every time he was teaching. In our lesson today, though, there are some people in the crowd who, well, they want children to just kind of stay out of the way. Hmm. What do you think Jesus will do? Listen and you'll find out. People had heard that Jesus was going to be in the area and they couldn't wait to hear him teach. 
More and more people joined together as they began to walk to the place where Jesus would be. And they probably began talking to each other. Maybe they talked about what Jesus would say. Maybe they talked about what Jesus would do. What would you have wanted to hear Jesus say or see Jesus do? Hmm, that's something to think about, isn't it? Well, there were lots of people in the crowd, and they were different people. There were men and women. There were moms and dads, and there were even children in the crowd that were traveling to see Jesus. But there was one thing about each of these people that was the same, and that was that they were all sinners. They had all done things that were not right in God's sight. But they aren't the only ones because you and I have sin too. Sin is anything that you think, anything that you say, anything that you do that is not right in God's sight. Will you say that with me? Are you ready? Sin is anything that you think, anything that you say, anything that you do. That is not right in God's sight. Good job. Now the Bible says, For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. That means that no one except for Jesus is perfect. You have sinned. So have I. We've made wrong choices. Now, when I was your age, maybe a little younger, maybe a little older, I used to get so angry I would yell at my sister and I would say, oh, terrible mean things to her. That was wrong. That was a sin. Maybe you've eaten extra candy when your mom wasn't licking, even though she told you to wait. Have you ever been in a group of people that were making fun of someone? And you say, oh, Mrs. Jen, I was, but I wasn't making fun of that person. Well, did you kind of laugh at what they were saying? That was being unkind. That was a sin. Maybe you haven't done one of those things, but you know something that you've done that was not right in God's sight. Everyone in that crowd of people had sinned, but they were all still going to see Jesus, maybe for different reasons, but they still wanted to hear Jesus teach. Finally, as they were walking, they saw another huge crowd of people and they knew they knew that they had found Jesus. Now, it was such a huge crowd. Do you think that they would actually be able to see Jesus? The children must have been especially excited to see and hear this important man who loved children so much. You know, God does love children. He loves you. He loves you so much. He loves you more than anyone in the whole world could ever love you. And he loved these children now, I want you to pretend that you are in the crowd of people, okay? I want you to stand up. And, of course, you're back a ways because you came with the traveling group. So you're going to have to stand on your tiptoe to see if you can see Jesus. Maybe crane your neck. Maybe shield your eyes. Oh, look, look. Oh, can you see him? Did you see him? Maybe. Maybe not. You can sit down. Well... I have a question to ask you. Have you ever been really, really excited about something? Maybe it was to open your birthday presents or Christmas morning. Is it easy to wait? No, it's not, is it? Do you think it was easy for the children in the crowd that day to wait to see Jesus? I don't think it was any easier for them than it is for you or me but they probably did have to wait a little while. But as soon as there was an opening, listen to what the Bible says. It says this, and they, probably their parents, brought young children to him. That means to Jesus. The parents brought their children to see Jesus. But something kind of strange happened. As they were on their way to see Jesus, there was a group of men who stepped into their way and stopped them. This is what the Bible says. His disciples rebuked those that brought them. That means that they, they told them to stop. 
Maybe even they told them to go away. No, it was Jesus' disciples, this group of men. Now, they were his students. You thought, you would think that, that they would let the children come. Well, we're going to pretend to be Jesus' disciples, so I want you to stand up. Okay, now you think that you're protecting Jesus by making sure that the children can't interrupt him. So I want you to throw up your hands and say, stop, don't come any further. Are you ready? All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Stop, don't come any further. Good job, you can have a seat. Now, did you say it like the disciples might have said it or did you kind of chuckle a little bit like I did? Well, I don't think the disciples were chuckling. They were Jesus' students, and they thought that they were protecting Jesus by stopping the children from coming. They didn't understand that Jesus wanted the children to come. You know, if you've asked Jesus to be your Savior from sin, you need to know that God wants you to come to Him. You see, Jesus was very upset that His students, His disciples, had stopped the children from coming. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says that when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. He was very upset that they had stopped the children from coming. He commanded the disciples to let the children come. In fact, he said, our memory verse, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Can you imagine all of those children running up to him? He must have gathered all of the children around him. Oh, maybe he even let some of the younger children sit on his lap. I think that the disciples could see that they were wrong to stop the children from coming. And the children knew right away that Jesus loved them. But Jesus wasn't finished teaching his students, his disciples, and everyone else who was there that day. He explained that a child's trust in him and love for him was to be an example for everyone, that everyone needed to follow, that, that everyone, adults, should love Jesus with their whole hearts, just like these children were loving Jesus with their whole hearts. Jesus wanted the children to come to him. And if you have Jesus as your savior from sin, you need to know that God wants you to come to him. Our memory verse says, why don't you stand up and say it with me? Are you ready? The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. God still wants you to come to him today. Maybe you're feeling sad and lonely and you wish that you had a friend. Well, you do. God will always be with you. And he wants you to come and talk to him. And you can always talk to him in prayer. Maybe you've been invited to go to a party where you know that your friends are going to be doing things that your parents don't want you to do. But you don't want your friends to think that you're silly. And you just don't know what to do. Well, God wants you to come to him. He wants you to read his letter to you, the Bible. And in it, as you read it, you'll see that God wants you to obey your parents and that God can help you to make the right choice. It's not always easy, but God is there to help you to do it. And he wants you to come to him when you're sad or lonely or you have a problem or a decision that needs to be made. And spending time talking to God in prayer and reading the Bible will help you to learn to live in a way that pleases him. It's how we can come to God today. The disciples learned a really important lesson that day. They learned that everyone is important to Jesus. You see, Jesus didn't just come to earth for kings and queens and important leaders. Jesus came for the whole world. Jesus came for men and women, for boys and girls. Jesus was willing to die on the cross for each of them. You see, Jesus was willing to die on the cross for you. The Bible says, But God commendeth or showed his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
Christ is another name for Jesus. Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for your sin. And he was buried, but he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he came alive again. And he did that so that you could have your sins forgiven. Have you ever come to Jesus and called on him, asked him to be your savior from sin? The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means that if you know you've done things that are not right in God's sight, and you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sin, that he was buried and that he came alive again, then you can ask Jesus to be your Savior from sin. Is that something that you're ready to do today? If you are and you say, yes, Mrs. Jen, I know, I know I'm a sinner and I need to ask Jesus to forgive me for my sin. How do I do that? Well, all you have to do is pray and ask Jesus to forgive your sins. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to pray with you. And if you're ready to ask Jesus to be your Savior from sin, you can repeat the same words after me. But you need to believe them in your heart. If you believe those words in your heart, then God will hear you and he will answer your prayer and you will become part of God's family. Are you ready? Eyes closed, heads bowed. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sin and that you came alive again. Please forgive my sin and be my savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time and you meant it in your heart, then you are now part of the kingdom of God. You are now part of God's family. You have just come to God, but you can keep coming to God by praying to him and talking to him in prayer, by reading his word, the Bible. God wants you to come to him in prayer. He wants you to come to him. The Bible says, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Maybe you're sad and lonely, and you want a friend, but God is always with you. He is your friend, and you can pray and talk to him at any time. Maybe you have a really hard decision to make. You can pray to him and talk to him in prayer, but you can also read his letter to you, the Bible, and see what it is that he wants you to do to live in a way that pleases Him. Are you willing to do it? Are you willing to spend time every day coming to God in prayer and by reading the Bible? If you don't know where to start, try the book of John in the New Testament in the second part of the Bible. Start at chapter chapter 1 and each day just read the number of verses for how old you are. If you're 10, read 10 verses and just start there and you can see how it is that God wants you to live in a way that pleases him. Eyes closed, heads bowed, one more time as we pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you so very much for everything that you've done for us. I pray that you would help us to come to you every day, to talk to you in prayer, and to read your letter to us, the Bible. In Jesus' name, amen. It's missions time. We're going to sing our missionary song together as we start today. Each day we're going to be learning something about a missionary family this week. And you can see here that I have what's called our go and tell box. On the box you'll see different ways 
that a missionary can go and tell someone about Jesus. That's what a missionary does, and that's what a missionary is. So let's see what's inside our Go and Tell box today. It's going to tell us something about our missionary family. Today, it's a picture of the Lutman family. And Mr. Tom and Mrs. Betsy head up that family. Mr. Tom was born in Nova Scotia, Canada. That's where he grew up, and Mrs. Betsy grew up in Illinois. They both asked the Lord Jesus to be their savior from sin when they were very young. They went to the same Christian college where they met. They fell in love and they were married and lived in Illinois for a time. They had three of their children while they were in Illinois. First of all, we have Elijah, who's 15 years old, and then Samuel and David are 13. That makes them twins. About 11 years ago, they moved to Pennsylvania so that Mr. Tom could be the director of Bible Visuals International. We call it BVI. And they produce beautifully visualized Bible lessons and songs and stories. In fact, the ones that we're using in our camp this week. And he is uh, the director of that company, that organization, so that he can tell the people what needs to be done and just uh, there's so many different things as the leader of that group. When they moved to Pennsylvania, they finished their family with Jesse, who's eight years old, and Ginger, who's six. They finally had a girl. We're going to be learning more about this family as we go along this week, but also about a very special project that you can be praying for. And also, if you want to help contribute to this project and the Lotmans, then there are a couple things that you can do. First of all, if you want to memorize that verse that Mrs. Jen taught in our Bible lesson, which I bet you already have it memorized, you can either have someone record that for you as you say it from memory, not looking at the verse, and email it to us, or you could say it to someone in your family and have them tell us that you had said it from memory. That will earn 50 cents for each verse for our missionary project. You won't have to provide that. We will do that as you earned it. And then we'll make sure that that money goes for the special project that the Lutmans are doing. Also, if you do workbook pages that are included in your camp kit, you'll be able to earn some money as well. We'll talk more about that later this week. But let's pray right now for our missionary family and thank God for them. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Lutman family, for Mr. Tom and Mrs. Betsy and how they love children and they want children to hear more about you. I pray that you will especially help keep them safe and, and Lord, as they travel as a busy family, that you'll watch over and protect them. And uh, Lord, as a special project will be something that we'll be talking about this week, help us to be excited about that as well. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The missionary story that we're going to be hearing this week is about a boy from the Philippines. And the Philippines is a republic, a group of islands that's located in Southeast Asia in the Pacific Ocean. It's made up of over 7,000 islands. A lot of them were formed by volcanoes. Now, they consider the climate there to be tropical, which means it's always in the 70s or 80s. That sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? But it also means that it's pretty hot and humid all of the time. The people who live there are called Filipinos. And our story is called Doming, the Popsicle Boy. Doming wiped the sweat off his brow. Oh, that box of popsicles was getting so heavy. And even though it was only 7 o'clock in the morning, the heat was almost unbearable. He carried a little bell to let people know that the Popsicle Boy was coming. And when Doming thought of his mother, he rained it even louder. You see, Doming's father had died, and so it was necessary for Doming to work to bring some money home to help the family. It was very needed. He wished his mother wouldn't make him go to school. After all, if he, if he didn't have to go to school, then he could work more. He could bring in more money for the family. But his mother wanted him to have a good education. Doming's grandfather was right, at least Doming thought that. He was 11 now and, and he could go to work in the rice fields. Doming's grandfather always told him he just needed a strong back and strong feet to work in those fields. Well, Doming smiled every time he thought of his grandfather. 
when he talked about the rice fields where he worked as a boy in Mindanao, that island where he lived, his, his toes would move and his feet would spread out. And the big toe always was a little bit further away from the others. Grandfather explained that was because he would have to dig his toes right into the ground so he wouldn't slide down the mountain when he was working in the rice fields. He said, Doming, I was already working in those fields when I was your age. Well, his father had put him to work and Doming kind of wished that he could go work too just to help his family out more. Doming loved his grandfather, but he was also a little bit afraid of him. Grandfather would often talk about how he hated Christians, how his own grandfather had killed many Christians with the same knives that Doming's grandfather now had. In fact, he usually carried one right at his side. He loved telling stories about his grandfather, and he would say to Doming, let there never be a Christian in this family. And Doming would just tremble with fear in his heart whenever that happened. Well, it was time to get ready for school, really close to the time, and he still had some popsicles to sell. And then he heard it. It was hammering. Oh, those workers make lots of pesos, dollars, and surely they would buy popsicles. Doming was right. They bought every single popsicle that he had. And then they teased him. Hey boy, make sure you take all that money home to your mother. They were just teasing him. But Doming knew what they meant because right then he could see a couple of his friends coming and they were always trying to get some coins from Doming. So he very quickly and carefully put it right in his pocket so they would be safe. As Doming was walking through the village, a man came out of the home where the missionaries lived and he had a camera in his hand. He smiled at Doming and, and he said, could I take your picture? Well, Doming raised his eyebrows. That meant, yes, can you do that with me? Let's try it. It's not easy to do, is it? But it meant yes. And so he was there ready, smiling, ready to have his picture taken. And his friends rushed over because they wanted to be in the picture too. Well, across the street was an older woman washing her clothes in a, a basin right there on the ground. And when she saw those boys ready to have a picture taken, she jumped up and ran across the street, waving her arms. Can you do that with me? Wave your arms. And she said, no, no, don't take a picture of three of you. That means something bad will happen to one of you. The problem was this woman was speaking in Tagalog. It was one of the Philippine languages. And that man didn't understand her. He'd already snapped the picture. Well, Doming's friends kind of laughed at the woman as they went on home. But Doming kindly said, don't worry, nothing's going to happen to any of us. The woman just shook her head and went back to her washing. Doming reached his house, which was built on stilts, lawn poles, because of the heavy rains that they got in the Philippines. He went right in and put his popsicle box on the floor in the corner and, and gave that money to his mom. And then he changed his clothes and grabbed his books to rush off to school. Some of the boys that he passed called Doming names, but Doming didn't mind. He understood that those boys would change places with him if they could. Doming really didn't mind school. He liked to study. Well, that week, something exciting was happening. In fact, when the day came, the whole village, it seemed, came to the little church that the missionaries had built. You see, they were celebrating because they were going to have a door on their church now. There it was, that beautiful front door. And not only that, but a concrete floor. Now it rains a lot in the Philippines and can you imagine a dirt floor is bad enough, but then when it gets wet and muddy, so they had this beautiful floor and we're celebrating. And even people that didn't usually go to church wanted to come and see what the celebration was all about. So the people came and, and Doming could see them as they were gathering outside, even though it was raining, they didn't mind, they were used to that as the church filled up and people were standing outside, he wished his family could go. But grandfather wouldn't let them. He didn't think. But then he got his courage up and he said, Grandfather, couldn't we just go and stand outside and see what they're doing? Well, his grandfather was kind of curious. And so he said that they could go. Doming was so surprised. In fact, they stood at a distance 
I think that grandfather figured there were so many people there, no one would really notice him that day. But he started moving a little closer as the service continued so that he could hear better. And Domain was pleased. He looked inside the church and he could see his friend Rosa and her mother. You see, they were Christians. Rosa even taught a Sunday school class in her church. They often spoke to Domingue about the Lord Jesus. He would go to their house sometimes and make sure that grandfather wasn't watching so that they could talk to him. While the pastor was leading the group singing and grandfather seemed to enjoy the songs. And then the pastor started preaching about the Lord Jesus. He explained the verse where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He explained how Jesus was the only way to heaven. Can you point to heaven with me? He said that Jesus had died on the cross for their sins, that he was buried and came alive again the third day. But each person had to make a choice, a decision, as to whether to admit their sin and ask Jesus to be their savior from sin or not. And when the pastor talked about Jesus being the only way to heaven, grandfather got angry. He touched that knife that he was hanging on his side and he said, we go home. He was very mad. Well, of course, they all went home. They weren't going to argue with grandfather. Many of the people started to leave. They were getting tired from standing outside and the sun was hot by then. It had stopped raining, but the Christians didn't mind. They were going to have a special feast after that service. Rosa had told Doming they were going to have roast pig and balut. Balut was a hard-boiled egg with a, a little duckling inside ready to hatch. Oh, the Filipinos thought it was delicious. Mother made a special meal for Doming and his grandfather. Oh, it was their usual rice and fish, but she cooked the rice in a special root today that made it a golden color and, and tasted so good. After their meal, Grandfather rolled out his sleeping mat and he was ready for a nap. Doming's mother went to visit a neighbor, so Doming decided he would go and see if Rose and her mother were home from the service. So he put on his coolie hat and he went over to their door and, and looked to make sure that Grandfather wasn't watching, that he truly was asleep, and he slipped inside to learn more about the God that they loved. He had such a longing in his heart to learn more, to learn all that he could. Well, later that afternoon, the sun was starting to set and Domingue and his grandfather sat outside watching that beautiful sky. He knew that grandfather really loved him, but he still frightened him sometimes. They talked about their day and Domingue tried to pray. He thought if grandfather's heart would just soften, then maybe all of us could become Christians. Grandfather sat there chewing on the, the beetle nut and spitting out that juice that was red as he was telling about stories when he was a boy. He told Domain, you know, when we worked on that island of Mindanao and those rice fields, men were really men, not soft like these men in the village today. Now, when I was a boy, and he started in on one of his stories, Domain loved to hear those stories, but... As I said, some of them really, really frightened him. He got that fear in his heart every time grandfather talked about killing the Christians. He wondered, what was the story going to be about this time? We'll find out tomorrow. Did you enjoy camp today? We hope that you're going to do the workbook pages and enjoy the crafts and the snacks and the prizes that are in your bag. We're going to end our camp day with a song called Deep and Wide, and you might like to do motions with it. It's a lot of fun. We just do the motions deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. And then when we get to the second verse, it will say you and me. So you can point you and me. Jesus died on the cross for you and me. Let's sing it together. Deep and wide.